Hi, this is David at MASH IT. And today, as requested, we're going to do a quick video testing an eGPU on our XPS 9500. Now, I know a lot of people buy this laptop because it is a great all-round workstation, but the graphics are quite weak. So we're going to be adding a Razer Core X Chroma eGPU to see if we can get much better gaming performance out of this XPS. Now, the good thing about this eGPU is it also comes with an RJ45 cable and four USB 3 cables. So you can use this for a one dock solution for your entire desk. You plug your monitor, your keyboard and mouse, and your network into it, and you're away. It's also very easy to install the graphics card. You pull the handle, slide it out, and you can see the power supply and the fan. And then we've now got access to pop in our graphics card. Now it's got a 700 watt power supply in this unit. Uh, there's not many cables because you don't need them. You've got your two 8-pin cables for your graphics card and you've got your exhaust fan there and that's really much it. We're going to just pop our graphics card in now, screw it in, we're going to slide it back into the eGPU, fold the handle and we're pretty much away. We can set the desk up. Now once you've got your eGPU set up, it's just one cable straight into your uh, laptop and you're away. The fans will all of a sudden spin up on the eGPU and it will light up. Uh, you know it's then connected. Now when you first plug it in, it will ask you to accept the connection through Thunderbolt. Just make sure you accept that and make sure you choose always. You'll also notice a slow charger notification come up. Now the good news is, with this testing, I ran completely with the one Thunderbolt cable from the eGPU and it charged, although slowly, the XPS 9500. In previous models, you had to also have the power adapter plugged in. This model, you don't, so that's a real plus for using the 9500 for an eGPU. It is purely a one cable connection. So I've installed a 2080 Super in the eGPU. Now I wanted to run some tests first, and so I've run Time Spy on the eGPU and also on the 1650 Ti. Now the graphics score was nearly 10,000 with the 2080 Super. So that's nearly, well, more than double what the 1650 Ti was scoring, so quite a good improvement straight away. Also, the laptop runs a lot cooler because you're only using the CPU in the laptop. In Geekbench OpenCL score, we've doubled the actual performance over the 1650 Ti. So a really nice boost here. So you can see, especially for uh, maybe video editing work or other rendering work, you're going to get a really nice boost by using that eGPU. And as I say, that laptop's going to run a lot quieter. Now what I want to do now is just pop a few games on here just so that you can see the actual performance. Uh, I'm going to be running OBS so you're actually going to get a good view of what I'm actually doing. And I'm going to put all the settings up to really push the CGPU as much as I can. It's only a 1080p high refresh rate monitor. I would have liked to have used a higher resolution to really push this GPU but this is all I had on hand at the moment. So you can see from the game of performance, it runs pretty smoothly. Now, I would have expected some higher frames per second, so there definitely is some sort of bandwidth issue that you're going to get with using an eGPU over a dedicated desktop. But if you are using a laptop and you can't have a laptop and a desktop or you just don't want to, this is a really good solution. Now, it isn't perfect. I got a couple of blue screens when I was initially setting it up, but once I got it stable and put the drivers on, it wasn't too bad. Once I plug the Thunderbolt cable in and we're all set up, it's very nice that it just pops the screen up, it pops my keyboard and mouse up and everything is usable and it was very stable. Using the keyboard and mouse didn't have any issues connecting or disconnecting, so that was all really good. And the fact that it charges the laptop and I don't have to use the power supply, it really is a one cable solution and it is really nice. I plug it onto my desk and I'm away. I would say though it is a lot of money for what it is, especially if the performance isn't as good as it would be as in a desktop thing. It's quite a niche market. It's got to be something that you really want to do to not have a desktop and a laptop. What you'll also find as well, if you're, certainly if you're looking at the uh, MSI Afterburner overlay, is that some games do perform better with the eGPU than others. You'll certainly notice that by some of the actual CPU usages in some games. But every game I was playing, if I didn't have MSI Afterburner running, I wouldn't have noticed you know, if I was running at low frames per second. It felt smooth the entire time, so that was very good. Now, I'm going to finish off here. But what I will say is I'm going to put the timestamps down below so that you can jump to the game that you wish to see. And if you've got any questions or any comments, please drop them down below and I will certainly get back to you. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found this useful. And please like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell because there'll be more content coming soon. Thank you for watching.
Charge. 